I'm here today at the Texas Prison Museum here in Huntsville, Texas. You know, I have to tell you, there are few things that in my mind strike fear right to the core of me, quite like the electric chair. This particular chair, actually 361 inmates were executed. You know, when I think about this idea of an electric chair and what it would have meant or looked like 2,000 years ago, well, that would have been the cross. And I don't know if you've ever thought about those of you that wear a cross or have a cross that you wear around your neck, kind of the oddity of that symbol and what it would mean. I mean, you probably would never imagine yourself or see yourself going to James Avery and getting a sterling silver or a 14 karat gold uh, electric chair charm. But if you think about it, that was capital punishment 2,000 years ago. The most excruciating, painful thing that the Roman authorities, the Roman government could possibly come up with. And not only that, it was full view of the public. They maximized the humiliating factor. And so this is what they did to Jesus 2,000 years ago in front of all view of the public on the busiest religious day of the year. Imagine taking what would be the equivalent of our World Series and our Super Bowl, putting them on the same day, and on that exact same day, you execute a man publicly. But see, this is what's interesting about the cross, is the very power of God takes an instrument of death, and only God can take a thing that made people think of an excruciating death and turn it into a hope-filled message of life. You know, Jesus, 2,000 years ago, hanging on a cross, something profound happened. A Roman centurion, we see it in Mark chapter 15, actually looks up at Jesus and says, surely this man is the Son of God. You know, I don't know if you've ever considered it before, this idea of unconditional love. A lot of you out there, if I asked you what is unconditional love, well, you would probably tell me unconditional love is the love of a parent to their child. But have you ever considered that if unconditional love is defined as the love of a parent to a child, that really, that's your condition. It's your child. It walks and talks and acts just like you. It's easy to love something that is a part of who you are. See, unconditional love for God is something quite, quite different, far more radical, far more wide-reaching, and has a depth that's beyond the scope of our imagination. See, the unconditional love of God that was expressed on the cross is not the love of a father for his son, as we know that the father turned his back on his son. Actually, unconditional love in the heart of the father is the love that a father has for his son's executioner. How crazy is that? That the heart of the father to have a relationship with you is so deep and was so deep that his son would go through all of that just so a Roman centurion would look up at the cross and rightly identify this is the Son of God. Mark chapter 15 says he was driven to praise, adoration, worship. So I want to remind you, no matter how far you think you've slipped, no matter how far you believe you have fallen, God took an instrument of death and used it to bring life. God will turn your deepest hurts the depth of your pain into hope in His very presence within your life. What the cross ultimately means is that nothing, not even you, not even all that you've been through, is beyond the outstretched, blood-soaked hands of Jesus Christ. He loves you deeply, and it's why He underwent something as painful and as excruciating as this chair behind me. In Jesus we have hope.
In Jesus, we have mercy. In Jesus, we have grace. And in Jesus, we don't have death. We have life.